All right, it's time to check on the package B. We installed the end of April around the 30th, feeding them right now. Now, in the last video, I stopped feeding them, but we hit a rain spell where it just was rainy and rainy, and I got to thinking I need to feed them. So I started feeding them, and as you can see here, I really socked it to them. I gave them three jars. So I gave them this 24 hours ago. This is how much they've consumed in 24 hours. So this is one-to-one, -one, no additives. This is one-to-one -one with additives. And this is one-to-one, -one, no additives. Now, they're in different positions because this screen board or this feeder board that I made and invented, it has screen below it. And so, I've, let me show you. I've got little circles cut. So the jar fits right onto the screen and the bees push their proboscis up through the screen and drink the sugar water. Tiny little holes in the lid. Back here, this is for a pollen patty, if you want to push that through. So I laid it there thinking that, you know, they can still reach up in there, but obviously they're taking the higher up screen sugar water less than they're taking this. This, this is, uh, I can't tell which one's more. I'm going to say pretty close to a tie from this mark yesterday down to about here. Of, with the additives, this mark here yesterday down to about here, about the same. So they're really guzzling it down. This is a half gallon jar. These are quart jars. So I'm really trying to get them fed to draw a comb out, especially since it's been raining. So today we're going to inspect the hive, see how they're doing. Woo, boy, you've been following this uh, package. We always keep a package of the packages we sell. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of go along with those of you that started with the package and you can compare. So these have been in here since the end of April. I can't remember the date. My lid says April the 27th, but I went back and made some changes. I made sure they didn't have any drawn combs. So I think April the 30th is the fair time to say they when we started these. So maybe they've had six weeks or so, not quite two months yet. Um, and I've been um, showing you guys their progress uh, each week. Every week I come in here show you how you how they're doing now sometimes when you watch a hive week by week you don't really notice a change because you know you saw it last week and you just don't really notice it too much look how many bees are on the feeder and they're like hey we were liking the food david why don't you take it away this is a feeder that i invented created many many years ago decades ago maybe two decades ago i can't remember but you guys buy these up like crazy and appreciate your business always um, let's take a look down here, see how they're doing. This is a top deep, trying to get them to draw out foundation. So we don't expect anything way over here, away from the middle. Not yet anyway. And they can always be a tad bit slower working the top. Now this frame here was an old piece of foundation that I did not wax. And then I think I tried to wax it and it just didn't work out good for me. And they built some columns on it. And I just keep, I just kept trying to get them to do right. And this is a frame that, it's not an acorn frame. And it was an old foundation. And they're not treating it very respectfully. Let me show you. So I knocked the column off. And they're kind of stalled out on this one. This has not changed week to week on that side. But not doing too bad on this side. Look at that. In fact, today, if you notice on this frame... They have a lot of larvae and um, eggs, larvae, even capped over. Looks like maybe some drone brood they capped over. This is one that my videographer uh, and I experimented with a mm, couple of weeks ago, maybe. And what we found was we thought we'd be it'd be fun to put in a foundationless, just a frame, just the wood, no foundation at all, not wax, not plastic. What would the bees do? They built nice comb on it beautiful i gotta be careful it doesn't fall off oh yeah that could fall off it's not attached to anything just the top so i gotta be careful you can hold it like this like a well i don't know like a top bar hive but all they did was made that a big drone frame look at that and yeah if you wanted to do mic control you could cut that out now freeze it let them rebuild it again not a bad idea <laughs> 
Well, any time that you use a foundationless frame like that, you never know how the other frames next to it might turn out. So let's see how they're doing next to it. Oh, they're not doing bad. They're starting to draw a little bit of comb out. They're not drawing comb out fast. Aha. Now, I've been kind of looking and watching all of these little cells, these queen cells they've been making. And so far, they've not had anything in them. I tear them down. They rebuild them back. But now they look a little more serious. Let's see if they're charged, meaning they have something down in there. Now I'm looking. No, they do not have anything in them. They're still empty. No matter how much I do this to them and look in there, they bring them back. So what if I take them completely away this time? Now they might have these in there just for emergencies in case they need a uh, emergency cell, but that's I'm going to move that one out of the way. Okay, let's look for the queen because I see some eggs. Anytime you see eggs, you might see the queen. Don't give up on that. I would say this is pretty typical progress. It's not outstanding, but this is the top box. So they've actually got about one, two, three, four frames drawn out in the top. And like I said, our weather has not been a prize winning season on the weather. Another queen cell with nothing in it at all. Just there in case they need it. Okay. All right. So another one over here with nothing in it. It makes me think they want to replace their queen, which is, you see her right there, a faint blue dot. I'm keeping it that way in case she swarms, and I, I will know what that blue dot looks like. It's just the letter U on her back. <laughs> but there she is. Okay, so she's moved over there, wanting to do some laying over there. And so I think it'd be fun to drop down to the bottom deep and get a little update over there. So let's put the frames back where we had them, which I believe I'm going to move them all at one time. That way you don't kill any bees on the edges of the frames. You can tell me if I messed this up, but I think it was right there in that space. Yep, it was. So we put that there. We'll smoke them good and drop to the bottom and get an idea of what's going on in the bottom deep. So let's go ahead and smoke them good. And... Let's go ahead and separate the two deep boxes with our hive tool. Work your hive tool in between them and smoke in between if you can. All right. Very good. All right. So we have a green drone comb that we need to check on to see if it's ready to take out and, and destroy some Vora destructor mites. Let's start with that one, huh? The timing is perfect. Green drone comb for mic control without using any chemicals. All right. Let's take a look here. They've not gone crazy with it. We know the queen was up in the other deep, so we don't have to worry about killing the queen. Um... I'm going to have to go ahead and freeze it because these are at the age of emerging. So let's shake these beads off and we'll put this in the freezer and that will bring a little bit more mite control. Um, may not hurt to take the foundationless too and either freeze it or put a frame in its place and not use that anymore. All right. Got the beads off of that so we can freeze it. And we'll put it back and continue to control mites with it. A little bit of nectar flung out. And uh, bees aren't at all offended by that. They will slurp that up pretty quickly. And a lot of that nectar is probably sugar water. But because I don't have any supers on here, I'm just trying to get them to draw frames out. I don't worry about them putting any kind of sugar water down in these frames. That's their food to use to raise brood and, and grow. All right, here's a frame, good larvae. That's what you want to see when you're scared of European fowl brood, and that is not European fowl brood. All larvae look 
shiny pearly white looks good we've got some eggs over here down in the cells isn't that a beautiful sight to see that's what you want to see right there so the queen is a great laying queen um i can't recall but i remember the last time we were in here i think we had two or three frames of cap larvae that was about ready to emerge and i believe that many of those frames have emerged already those bees have joined the workforce of you know helping the bee grow helping the whole hive become bigger and so that's great let's look at this one okay yeah so what this means is if you get a good idea friends you can see the brood in the middle, the open cells mean they emerged and they've already gone back and laid more. The queen has. The ones on the edges haven't emerged yet. So see, these are bees joining the workforce, being replaced by eggs, and now they're growing into larvae. Same over here as well. Look at that. It's good to see that. Nice to see the hive. That's the hive produces more bees like this. It's going to snowball. Right now, we're the little tiny snowball that's rolled down the hill for five or six weeks. But as that snowball continues to produce more and more bees that join the workforce, become foragers, become house bees, then we have more and more progress. So you can see we're, we're making good progress. I did some checkerboarding. That's why that frame doesn't look as drawn out because I put it between two that were drawn out, checkerboarding the brood nest area. Here's one that was drawn out good. And look at that. Bees are emerging out of there. Same over here. Emerging and being replaced. Some of those are emerging as we're looking at them. That's great. All right. Well, that's enough, I think, to see. Here's a frame we checkerboarded in the middle of two that were drawn out or started to be drawn out pretty good. We checkerboarded this one and it failed. It did not help us at all. To be drawn out next to the one that was all right let's scoot some frames back in position now do you think this hive is keeping up where it should be i think given our climate our weather and everything and what i'm seeing as far as eggs and larvae i think it's right on course you know like i said about five weeks six weeks maybe it's been going on here from nothing no frames were drawn out a package of bees ten thousand bees about 3,300 bees a pound. So we had three pounds with a mated queen that's still in there. They're doing good. They've got a lot of frames drawn out down here. We've and got brood on them. And we got about four or five frames, almost four and a half up above. Not counting our dream, green drone comb, kind of. But anyway, we're this hive is on course. It's not doing bad. This is a space that represents our green drone comb. So we have the option now of putting another green drone comb in here, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to give them an undrawn foundation and I'm going to use Patrick's frame above the foundationless to be the one that where we really get to control mites. Sorry, Patrick, that, that frame is awesome. Let's put one down here that's drawn out. All right, here's an acorn foundation, double wax, I believe. So we'll put that down here in place of the green drone comb that we're going to freeze. Perfect. Let's put our deep on, and we'll take Patrick's frame out and freeze it as well. All right, let's check out the foundationless frame right here. We're going to take it, and we're going to put another frame in there. So let's get that other frame ready. So the foundationless frame right here all drones not doing it any good right now to this hive it's uh it's kind of a waste really so let's go ahead and get that frame out of here good experiment pretty impressive but we don't need that many drones look at that wow Ooh, baby and they're ready to emerge i don't want it to break off you know Oh, I'm giving them a drink of stuff. All right, good enough. We'll, we'll, sh we'll brush more off in a minute. All right, so let's go ahead and put them in. 
a new acorn foundation here, double waxed in place of it. Let them start going. Let's equalize all frames to the middle, tightening up all the frames to prevent wonky comb from being drawn out. Now let's put our feeder back on. Feeder board, feeder board back on. I always like to put um, my circles toward the front of the hive. I don't know why. I just kind of like that better. All right, let's put our jars back on the way we had them. I'm going to take this jar here and put it. I got a little bee. Get out of there. Ooh, there's a bee wanting to get in. Oh boy. There we go. Put that there. All right. And now we had a jar of just plain sugar water at the front. Uh, that circle. And then we had the fuller jar back here at, at the uh, pollen screened area that isn't really not much going on there. So what we're going to do now, put our deep top on. So look at this, kind of fascinating in that you have a uh, beautiful comb, but it's all drone comb. And this is what we do to catch mites. Uh, the Vora Destructor mite would be more apt to go into these drone cells. They're perfectly aged, capped over, ready to emerge in a couple of days, any day really. And so by us taking these amount of drones here and freezing them, then we actually will kill a lot of mites if the hive has a lot of mites. So without using any kind of, you know, chemicals or treatments, uh, this is a form of mite control. Now, if you don't want to do it this way, you can actually buy a frame that's designed in such a way that the queen will only lay drone cells on it. It's called a dream, green drone comb frame. Look at the nectar. Oh, dripping out. But you can see here, they, the queen is, it's a larger size cell. So the queens have the queen has laid a lot of drone in there, and so we we can actually freeze this one as well, and uh, kill a lot of mites too. And if you have two of these, you can actually take this one, put it in the freezer, freeze it for a couple of days. You take your other one, put it in the hive while this one's being you know frozen, and getting rid of your mites, and then you can swap them. So you can always have one in there doing mite control for you. It really is an effective way. Uh, to, do, to do some mic control for sure. I hope you'll join me for two more videos right here. I've got one on June tips, what you should be doing in the month of June, and this one here. What do you do if your hive gets really defensive and hot and angry? A hot hive, how do you deal with it? June tips. See you guys over in these videos.